Hello. Today's stories come from r slash petty revenge. We have four servings of hilariously petty stories from one of my favorite funny subreddits. Story one starts with, I have to pay to print personal stuff at work? So do you, boss. Many years ago, I worked for an organization providing frontline customer service. It was a decent place to work, but our manager had lots of rules. One of the rules was that we could not do any personal printing with the printers at work. If we did, we were expected to pay 50 cents per page for black and white printing and $1 per page for color. I'm not sure who made this rule, but the manager was constantly reminding us. Our desks were not assigned, meaning any day you could be sitting at any desk depending on your assigned tasks for the day. One day, I was interviewing for another job within the organization, but at another location. Prior to the interview, The manager of the other location asked me if I'd mind printing a copy of my resume and bringing it with me, as their printers were down for the day. I said no problem and figured I'd print it at work since it was work-related. I was sitting at a desk that did not have a printer at it. The closest printer was located between my manager's desk and an employee desk. So I printed it and stood up to go get it. Before I go to the printer, my manager got there first. My print job went ahead of hers. When she saw what I had printed, she said, OP, this looks like a personal print job. I explained it wasn't, but she disagreed and said since it had nothing to do with our day-to-day work, I had to pay $2 for four black and white pages. I begrudgingly paid up. I asked her what happened to the money, and she said she always put it in the Christmas party fund. All right. A few weeks later, I was sitting at the desk with the printer at it. It was lunchtime and everyone, except my manager, agreed to go to a nearby restaurant for lunch. I had walked out our building and realized I forgot my wallet, so I quickly ran back in to get it. When I got to my desk, I could hear the printer going. I was curious what was being printed as it was spitting out page after page. I quickly glanced at the pile and saw at least 100 pages printed in color, announcing a sweet 16 for Trista our manager's daughter. It very obviously belonged to my manager. My manager came out of the bathroom a moment later and seemed shocked to see me standing there. I picked up the pile and passed it to her and told her our Christmas party fund was going to be getting a big boost. She said nothing, but looked really uncomfortable. A few weeks later, our district manager made his quarterly visit. He talked about the upcoming Christmas party and how excited he was for it. I decided it was time for some petty revenge. I raised my hand and said, just wondering how much we've accumulated this year for the Christmas party from print jobs. He looked so confused and asked me to explain what I meant. So I told him our manager's rule. He got really quiet and said he'd have to review this. The next day, my manager sent an email saying the printing rule was something she was misinformed on and would be abolished immediately. Me, being the little troublemaker I am, hit reply all and asked what would happen to the already accumulated funds. Someone else said we should have a nice healthy fund for a pizza lunch and everyone agreed. The next day, I hear my manager ordering 10 pizzas for lunch. Also, used her own personal credit card to pay for it all. Do I think she was pocketing the printing money all along? Absolutely. But it was fun making her sweat and then having to spend nearly $300 the next day to make up for it. Edit. $30 for a large pizza is very standard where I'm from. I ordered a pizza for supper last night, and with tax, tip, and delivery, I paid $36. Our manager ordered us pizza from Boston Pizza, Canadian chain. Google them, and you'll see their prices. OP's manager was running a racket print shop, my goodness. Even back in the day when they had printers at convenience stores, I don't remember it costing that much to print, and offices generally receive volume discounts. It would be one thing if they were trying to discourage use of company supplies, but this is obviously not that. OP's revenge basically amounted in their colleagues getting back their money in the form of pizza. Let's head to the comments where people had more questions about the pizza than anything else. Haloco said, Where do you live work that 10 pizzas cost $300? OP replied, Near a Boston pizza. Large pizzas from there, several years ago, were at least $25 per pizza plus 15% tax. Hazardous Gaming said now mediums are $25.
Sergeant Redanculus added, $25 is the new $15. Freddy Rock said, a pizza party that was actually worth it. <laughs> Arrow Triple Seven added, nurses everywhere rejoice at the concept. De Balbuena added, yeah, who needed a COVID bonus or hazard pay when you got pizza? Fractera said, I mean, if she was pocketing the print money all along from her employees, that's major theft and she should be fired and prosecuted. Schumann Webb added, this exactly. Boss lady should consider herself lucky that she got through that with her career still intact. $300 is a small pittance compared to what could have happened. Termination Bliss said, that's why she paid it, knowing that full well. Our second story won all the heartfelt awards for the month. It's titled, My Boyfriend Looked Up Spoilers to Our Favorite Video Game. So I did too. My boyfriend and I play Zelda Breath of the Wild together. I am a take your time and enjoy the ride kind of gal, while he is a let's look up how to beat this game right now kind of guy. Because his way ruins all the fun, we came up with a rule. No looking up spoilers. We were looking for a particular challenge, the eight heroin side quest for my fellow Zelda nerds, for a very long time. Suddenly, my boyfriend said, I did something bad. I looked up where to go. I'm so sorry. I just couldn't take it anymore. I told him it was fine, but that he could not tell me what he had seen. He agreed. I then excused myself to the bathroom and looked up the location as well. I then spent the next hour and a half wandering so close to the location without ever making it there. I could see him squirming around in his seat every time I got close. When I jumped off the cliff the statue was built into, gliding down to the base of the statue and continuing on without turning around to look at it, I thought he was going to explode. He was clenching his hair in both fists and biting his lower lip, trying to contain himself. That's when I caved and told him what I had done. He thought it was hilarious and told me about how he wanted more than anything to yell, turn around, what are you doing? We had a good laugh about it. He hasn't looked up a spoiler since. Love this. I don't know about you, but I find it impressive that OP's boyfriend managed to contain himself despite losing his composure. Let's head to the comments, which point out some funny details about OP's compromise. Sly Blue said, this is the kind of wholesome petty revenge we all needed to see today. Nope, Isaac said, please don't spoil for me how this relationship goes. Scapegoat of War added, statistically, bad. D. Allenbert said, is she gonna look up those statistics then spend the next 60 plus years taking the relationship everywhere except there, just to be extra petty. HP Nerd 44 said, this relationship is going to last. I really love how he wasn't annoyed when you told him and you both got a good laugh. Drunken Honky added, nothing is worse than trying not to backseat game when you are watching a friend who is so close to doing something but just keeps barely fumbling. Super Duper Dutch said, I was playing this game after my roommate had already beat it and I just know he felt the same thing. He would shake his head and sigh, watching me try and figure it out. In response to, because his way ruins all the fun, we came up with a rule. No looking up spoilers. Agreeable Farmer said, We both have our preferred way of playing games, so we came up with a rule. We do things my way. Story 3 brings us into the holiday season. You might be thinking, Santa Claus, or lit up decorated trees, but no. We're talking about peak Christmas-themed entitled parents. The story is titled, Don't Use Me to Parent Your Kids. I have dwarfism, and this often leads to weird interactions in public, especially with kids. Sometimes a kid comes up to me to ask me why I'm so short, and I have a pre-prepared response for that. But most of the time, they just loudly ask their parents why I'm so short. Usually the parents will awkwardly drag their kids away, telling them not to comment on people in public, which is sad, but understandable. I like the parents who just say something about how some people are born like this. And even though we look a bit different, we're still regular people, just like everyone else. Sometimes I hear a gem like, I bet he shrank in the wash. What I can't stand is when people try to use me to parent their kids. I'm sure you can think of ways to convince your kids to finish their plate at dinner that don't involve pointing at a dwarf in public and saying, that's what happens when you leave food on your plate. Or, he didn't listen to his mommy when she told him to eat all his vegetables. It's rude and it's humiliating. 
It teaches your kid that differences are a bad thing and that people are at fault for their differences or disabilities. It just pisses me off. A few days ago, I was in public and a kid who was maybe four or five years old was acting out and his mom was clearly struggling to keep him under control. So she pointed to me and told her son that I was one of Santa's elves and I was watching him and would tell Santa about his behavior. The kid's name was on a key ring on his backpack. So I just said, it's okay, Hunter. You're already on the nice list. And Santa told me you're getting an iPad this Christmas. Hunter was excited. His mom was not. Who does this? What is wrong with people? I mean, this is just plain mean and unnecessary. It's actually quite bothersome. I have to say, very well played on OP's part, though. Probably wishful thinking to hope Hunter's mom learned her lesson here, but I bet she'll at least think twice before saying something this idiotic in future. Let's take a sleigh ride to the comments, where there's a very cute anecdote about a little boy curious about wheelchairs. JLB said, the way the mom spoke about you was dehumanizing. Your comeback was perfect. Read Bike Yodel Repeat added, literally, elves aren't human. CJ's opinion shared, my son asked why a man was so short. All I thought to say was because he wasn't tall. My son accepted that with no questions. Sometimes, simplicity is all you need. OP replied, also a great response. Ha <laughs> Kodo said, I always liked, quote, my legs are long enough to reach the ground. End quote. Groovy Yaya shared, That is awesome. My cousin was definitely of the, hey, people come in all shapes and sizes with her son, but she could not get his three or four year old self to stop staring at a guy in a wheelchair when they were standing on a sidewalk, I think waiting for a parade or something. He started to ask questions and my cousin shushed him and the man said that it was okay. At his age, questions were natural and understandable. He was missing a leg. Well, to both their surprise, he wasn't at all curious about the missing leg because people come in all shapes. He was fascinated by his wheels. Kiddo had been bitten by the obsessed by all vehicles bug thanks to grandpa, and I think even asked him if it had gears, etc. When the guy popped a wheelie, my cousin said her kid practically exploded with excitement and she got an immediate request that he wanted a wheelchair too, so he could learn to do that. It tickled the guy, thankfully. On to story four. This one might leave you scratching your head wondering, what's petty about this revenge because it's glorious? Until you remember what started it. Our story is called, My Girlfriend Got an Illegal Airbnb Ring in Her Apartment Complex Busted. We live in a new and small apartment complex, only 40 units within two buildings. It's very low key and within walking distance to our downtown. It's very affordable for how convenient a location it is. Back in September, we noticed the vacant unit beside us was getting moved into by a new tenant with furniture, decor, etc. One weekend, not long after moving in, we heard what sounded like a little party with music and loud voices well past midnight. We heard a lot of people coming in and out of the front door, but letting the door slam each time to where it shook the walls. Maybe they were having a housewarming party or a friend's get-together at the new place so we brushed it under the rug as a one-off incident. For the next few weeks, we noticed a variety of people coming in and out of this apartment, and none of them seemed to be the same individuals. Parking also started to become much more busy than usual, as well as the cars kept changing. So, something seemed off. My girlfriend started working night shift for her job not long after the neighboring apartment became occupied. She is a light sleeper and noticed that all throughout the morning and before going to work, the neighbor's door was always slamming and shaking the walls. She understands that people are active in the day and she can't ask people to cater to her night shift needs, but she felt the constant slamming of doors was not only disruptive, but unusual behavior. One particular morning was the straw that broke the camel's back. She had finally had enough because of the effect it was having on her sleep. She wanted to see who was slamming the door. She heard the door slamming around 10.30 a.m. and got up and witnessed people walking to their car with suitcases and leaving. Soon after, a man arrived and pulled up the front doormat and retrieved a key and let two women with cleaning supplies into the apartment. Each time they entered or left the door would slam and shake the wall. Seeing this, she searched Airbnb and almost immediately found the rental unit next door. Same floor plans, wall paint, flooring, etc. 
To our surprise and anger, we found a total of four listings in our apartment complex alone on the host's profile. That is 10% of the apartments in our buildings. Through the listings, we found the individual's LinkedIn and business website. On his website, he claims that he does something called rental arbitrage. Essentially, this is renting out a long-term rental on short-term basis, lease an apartment, and rent it on Airbnb for profit. This can be done legally with the landlord's permission. The lease agreement does not allow for subletting or short-term rentals. They were renting out three of the four ground-end units offered, units with unique floor plans. The fourth unit was a handicap-accessible unit. That's right. This man and his business partner leased an apartment meant for accommodating people with disabilities, with the intention of using it for his little short-term business empire he was trying to build. Our city and region, like in other places, has been feeling the squeeze on apartment availability, and these buttheads are contributing to the problem. It was at this point we took this personally, as we had our own problems dealing with apartment availability, weightless, disappointment, and frustration. My girlfriend called the leasing office and notified them that the neighboring unit is being rented out on Airbnb, and asked if that was allowed, to which the office gave an emphatic, absolutely not, and asked for the listings to be sent to them in an email. Later that day, the office called her back and said they notified that tenant that they will be inspecting the apartments the following afternoon. After the inspection was completed, the office notified that they had sent a cease and desist of any rental activities outside the lease agreement or face eviction. They also informed us that you should not have any more problems concerning the matter, and if you do, don't hesitate to give us a call. Now this jerkwad has four leases he is stuck paying $1,500 per month for and can't make any more money through Airbnb. He's bleeding money at the tune of about $6,000 per month. His only legal options are to continue paying for them or to break the leases and vacate. Last week, we watched as movers emptied out the apartments. I'm sure they lost deposits and or were penalized for breaking the leases. A very expensive lesson for being greedy entrepreneur. Don't be an a-hole, folks. Also, don't piss off a night shifter trying to sleep. Edit. Forgot to mention that his LinkedIn account shows he enrolled and completed courses through Thai. Here in my garage. Lopez online program. (laughs) Edit 2. A lot of butthurt people in the comments and DMs. Stay mad. This is a prime example of people taking justice into their own hands. With the current state of things, it's totally understandable that OP and his girlfriend couldn't tolerate this guy trying to make money on four units that should have gone to people who needed them. Affordable housing is super hard to find. OP and his girlfriend did what they thought would be best for the benefit of others. I wonder why people were so mad, and I wonder what DMs he got. Anyway, onto the comments where, as expected, there's lots of anecdotes of people having issues with Airbnbs. Virginie said, The leasing office rented four apartments to one person and they didn't think it was weird? Something stinks. OP replied, That's what we thought too. He has at least another guy in on it. One of the places, I think, was used by another tenant before we moved in. We think. Perry Chai said, Your girlfriend is a hero. I would love to have someone like her in my neighborhood. We're eagerly awaiting the Airbnb crash over here. (laughs) Oh, Jenny added, Hopefully we will see more of this soon. There are a lot of people doing exactly what this guy was, but Airbnb listings are way down. I think more investors are going to go down. Who we once were added, homes are supposed to drop like 20% as well, so it'd be nice if these people bought high and take a loss. McNew shared, I'm a travel nurse. I rented an Airbnb for a week while waiting on my short-term housing, three-month rental, to be ready. The listing said, private cabin. Okay, looks good, whatever. We get there, and it's a complex of single-story townhouse-style apartments. I was installing a minor cosmetic item on my Jeep, and someone came by and asked if I had just moved in, etc. I was like, uh, no, just staying for the week. After a brief chat, I told him I thought I rented a private cabin on Airbnb. Turned out, the dude worked for the complex and acted like a massive butthole to me the rest of the week. The Airbnb host actually called me and told me I needed to tell them, the complex, I knew her personally, so that I wouldn't get in trouble. Me, not her. I had no place to go, and I was 2,000 miles from home. I had to just deal with it for a few days, but I was furious. Furious to be in that situation, 
Furious that the host asked me to lie for her benefit. Furious that she was part of the problem of people effing over locals and messing up the housing market. I reported the listing to Airbnb, left an honest review of the host, and gave the apartment complex as much information as I was comfortable sharing. If you've enjoyed the story and would like to hear more, consider liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. Thanks, and bye for now.